In this video, you will learn how to perform calculations using JetForm Builder. JetForm Builder actually allows you to perform complex calculations using meta fields, your form fields, or static values. And there are two types of calculations. One is the regular one that you know, which is performing number calculations. And the other one is concatenation of strings. And we'll be looking at both of them in this tutorial. So now let's jump right in. So here we have a loan repayment calculator that I created. In it, we have three inputs. The first is a number field for the principal, and that's supposed to be in pounds. The second one is a select field for the time in years. So we can select how many years. And then the third is for the rates in percentage per annum. So these are the three fields. And this is the general formula we're working with, but we have to break down this formula because this is the principal, which is the regular number, but the rate is supposed to be the monthly version. So we have to do the APR divided by 12 divided by 100. And then the time is the total number of months, which is this year multiplied by 12. So that is what we have to do. So now let me go ahead and show you how I created the form. So if I come over here, this is just a form. Let me go back to the beginning. And all I did was just come to JetForm Builder and I created a new form. And that's the form that was created. In the form, if I click on the list view, I used GreenShift to create some containers. That's one nice thing about JetForm Builder is that it works well with other like block editors. So you can use it with Cadence, with your generate blocks, with your green shifts. You can also use it with any page builder like Elementor, like Bricks. But if you're going to use it the page builder, first you have to build it in Gutenberg. Then you can style it in the page builder of your choice. For this example, I'm just working with the Gutenberg editor. So here we have three inputs. Like I said, the first one is a number field, which you can get if you click on the plus icon, and you just simply search for a number, you get the number field, and I also use the select field. Okay, so those are the two fields that I used. So we have the number field, select field, and another number field. So the things you have to take note of is in the number field, the first thing I like to do is always give it a name that's easy to remember. The label can be anything, but I like to name it something that I will remember, especially when I'm trying to do calculations. So the label is that I wish to borrow XYZ, but the name is principal. And I also give it a default value of 7,500 so that on page load, it will load this 7,500 as the initial value. The nice thing about it is you can also use dynamic data. So this value doesn't have to be static. You can make it a dynamic data to pull in data from your posts, your option pages, and things like that. And then you can define what your minimum value is, what your maximum value is, and what the step is. The, this step, that's where you can define, do you want it to be going in an increment of 0 0.5 or an increment of 1, that's integer numbers, or you want it to go in an increment of maybe 0 0.01, which is the default for like currencies and things like that. So that's why you define it. Then I also define the select field. For the select field, there are multiple options for your select field. You can choose to pull your option, that is to fill your option from a manual input. That's where you impute the numbers yourself. You can impute it from your posts, from your terms, from your meta field, from the glossary and things like that. Any how you want to feel, that's one thing about JetForm Builder. And the beautiful thing is, all of these you get for free. Like, you're not, you don't have to pay for JetForm Builder. It's only when you start doing some other extra complex things like hierarchical select or try to do some other kind of payments. That's when you need to get the pro version. The free version is so powerful that I'm like, wow, that is something wonderful. 
So what I chose to do is that I chose the manual input and then I clicked on the wrench icon and I imputed all of the values. If you look at the values, let me edit it. So we have the label. This is what will be shown visibly. The value, this is what will be imputed into the database and which will be sent when you are sending the form like to your email or things like that. And then the last one is the calculate field. This will be what we use in our calculations. So these are the three fields. The first one is for the user to see on the front end. The second one is for your server, which is what will be used when you are sending the form either via email or into the database or anything like that. And the last one is for your calculation inside the form. The way I actually imputed all of these values was using the bulk option because I like to write things manually myself. So I just click on the bulk option and just follow the steps here. So you can see maybe something like test, maybe test with small letters and then column and you choose maybe like 24. So we have test, the visible text, test, the text that goes into the database and then 24 for the calculation. If you don't want to replace the inputs you've already had, you can just choose to add. If I choose add and say yes, it will add it as an extra input to the already added input. So this is nice. If you have some bulk values you want to add to your already existing like select field, if you want to replace it, then all you have to do is, let me delete this and delete the other one. You come to the bulk options and then you just simply choose to replace. That will replace all your other existing options. We don't need to do any of that now. So let me just close it and then I'll save it. So for that one, I gave it the field name of time. And finally, for the rates, the same thing. So I just give it a label, give it a field name of rate, give it a description and the default value of 3.7 and so on. Then the step is 0 0.01. Okay. So for the actual calculation, because like I said from the example, we want the calculation to be based on a monthly thing. So for the first one, we have to now divide it by 12 divided by 100, which is what I did here for the rate. So I now created another calculated field. If you come to the plus icon and look for calculated, so you get the calculated field. This is the field I'm using to do the calculation. Let's go back. So that's the calculated field. And for the rate, all I'm doing is saying the rate. How did I get this? Let me delete everything. When you are in the field, this text area field, you click on the wrench icon. That's where you cannot choose your form field input. So and here I now choose rate. And then I said divided by 12 divided by 100. There are three things you can actually pull. You can pull form field data like this rate. Or if you want to pull a meta field, which I'll show you now after I do this example, you can pull from a meta field as well. With that one, all you have to just write is in all caps, M-E-T-A, meta, double column, and then you put the name of the meta field. So it's not telling you it's a meta field. For form fields, the long version you can do is, you can also write field, double column, rate. So this will tell you that it's a form field, but you don't need to do that nowadays. Now it is smart enough. So once you just put rates like this it will know it is a form field and then i'll say divided by 12 divided by 100 that's why i get my value for the time it just multiplied by 12 which is what we get here it says to multiply it by 12 to get the number of months and then for the rate this is the functions that you are allowed to use in the form which i'll leave in the description at the end of the video so basically for basic arithmetic, you have plus, minus, so addition, subtraction, multiplication is the asterisk, division is the slash. If you want to do modulo, that is when you divide and then you take the remainder. So if you say 5 modulo 2, it will be 5 divided by 2, the remainder is 1. So it will be 1 as a modulo with percentage. If you want to do exponential, you can just do x, asterisk, asterisk, y. So let's say 
2 asterisk asterisk 3 that will give you 8. On the other hand, you can also do mat.pow in bracket. The first value is the base value, so that is like x raised to power y. Then there are other functions you can use for number multiplication. We have mat.round to round it to the nearest integer, mat.floor to round down, mat.seal to round up, the trunk to remove decimals, and so on. So there are so many different functions we can use, even square root, cube root, and so on. So I'll leave a link to the document that you can just go ahead and just look at as your reference guide. So that's what I used here. I said, I want the principal multiplied by, which is asterisk, the calculated rate, which is that rate divided by 12 divided by 100, multiplied by 1 plus the, that rate again, raised to the power of the time, then divided by, so all of these is just the calculation, and that's how easy it is. Then for your calculated field, there are some options you can do. If you notice from the front end, only the monthly calculation is showing. All the other fields are hidden. How did I do that? Simply come to the field. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you see hidden. I just made it hidden. So I can now use the value from it in another calculation, but it still exists on the page somewhere, but it's hidden. So that's what I did for the two of them. And then the last one, I just defined that I want a prefix of pound sign with a space. This and NBSP just means that we want a space that is not breaking so that the pound is always attached to the value. Then I said I wanted it to be in two decimal places. I wanted the decimal separator to be a dot and then the thousand separator to be a comma. And I wanted it to be in two decimal places. The thing you need to remember about calculated field is that the value type can either be as number or as string. If you say the value type is as number, that means at the end of your calculation, what you have as the output is a number. Whereas if you say as string, it means that at the end of your calculation or whatever kind of calculation you do, the output is going to be a string. So it's going to be a text character. So that's what you have to remember. So now let's see several different examples so that you get the hang of it. Now, like I said, let me go over to this page and I will edit the page. I said you can either use form fields or you use an input from a meta field. So here's an example of a meta field we have. We have a meta field called rate and the value is, let me just make it 10. So if we want to use this meta field in our calculation, I'll copy this meta field name. Let me save it. And then I'll come back to the form and this time in the form, rather than using this rate anywhere, maybe let's say I don't want to use this rate from the form field. I want to use the rate from my meta field. So I'll now say meta double column and then rate because that rate is the name of the field that I used here. So and now save this and we go ahead and now preview this on the front end. Let me refresh it. Okay. So we have the rate is 7,500, but rather than taking this 3.7, is even if I change the number now, nothing changes because now it's taking the value of 10. So if I change it from here, see it is maybe that that says one. I save it. And I come back, refresh. You see the value reduces. So it's now taking that value of the percentage of one. So that's it. That's how we can take the rate. So let's say maybe this time five. Save. And I will refresh. And this time, if I go down, see the value is different. So that's how you can use a meta field in your calculations. So now let's go ahead and see some other calculations that we can use. So let me come back to my form. Here, let me create a new 
calculated field. So this is used for our examples. So this time, let me say one square root. So I'll use math dot square root. Paste that here and say I want the square root of 25. Okay, let's see if that works. Save it. Come back, refresh. You see the value is 5. If you want the cube root of, let's say, 27, okay. 27, save that, that should give us 3, refresh, and we get 3, and so on. So that's how we can use so many of any of these mathematical expressions, and we get our values. So that's it for numbers. But what if we want, like I said, to output a string? So what does that work? This is how it works. So I come back to my, that same value here. And this time, rather than saying value type as number, I want it to be as string. And the way strings work, you have to wrap them in quotation marks. So I'll say in the quotation mark, maybe David plus Jonathan. Let's see what that gives us. Save. And we come back and refresh. You now see it gives us David space Jonathan. And that's how the as string works. And yeah, that's it about calculated fields. But if you want to take it a step further and use conditional logic with it, then check out this other video. <laughs>